Quavo talking to Congress. I'm so sick of this Kershaw Rock shit. Oh, my God. Oh, by the way. Yo. Uh, yo. Yo, DJ Envy, man. You're my nigga. Okay? You're my brother. I've always looked up to you um, in, in the sense of you're a DJ, but I know you get money like a rapper. Like 100%. Right? And um, with you getting money like a rapper... Um, I've always thought that it was through hustling. And I'm going to be honest with you. This new era that you're in, bro, looks so embarrassing. DJ Envy, Cesar Pena Scam. Hey, I'm going to play this video. If you guys don't know, if you haven't kept up with it. So DJ Envy, at a point like a couple years ago, started promoting real estate. Now, let me just be, be very honest with you, chat. If you see a entertainment channel start promoting financial advice, it's usually 99.999 times a scam. If your entertainment, like, what the fuck does the Breakfast Club know about fucking financial advice? Nigga, y'all make us laugh with donkey today and talk about shit you see on the blogs. The fuck are you over here telling people where to invest millions of dollars or invest their life savings? But that's what actually what happened, people. So, DJ Envy, who is like the lead with the, at the Breakfast Club with Charlemagne, he found this guy. The guy named was Flippin' and Jay. His real name was Cesar Pena or Pena or whatever. And, you know, um, they basically got a bunch of people. They threw seminars and got people to invest in a bunch of shit. Now, I'm going to try to skip through this video chat because this shit sounds crazy. The, the synopsis of it is that um, this guy was able to scam up to $10 million from regular people. Now, I'm a little bit upset by it. And... The reason why is because, bro, you're scamming hard-earned people, and y'all are supposed to be multimillionaires. You know what I mean? Like I always tell y'all, I make the majority of my money. That you know, you know, I might be like, yo, I talk a lot about money. I grab it from the record labels. They're billion-dollar companies. I don't take it from the hard-earned people and then flaunt it and, you know, what I mean, scam. That's not just like I would just feel scummy doing that. But this is the essence and the core of what's being accused of this thing. And I never realized how crazy it was until, I guess, this one guy, his name is Spencer Cornelia. He put together, like, all the lawsuits that's being filed to kind of, like, crystallize what's going on. Check this out, chat. Here we go. Breakfast Club introduced Cesar Pena, a relatively unknown real estate investor in New Jersey, onto the show as a featured guest. Recent lawsuits have been filed against Caesar and DJ Envy alleging a Ponzi-like investment scheme that has taken millions from investors. It all started with this interview. We got a special guest in the building. You might know him on Instagram as Flippin' NJ, my friend Caesar Pena. Five years later, numerous customers allege they were defrauded by Caesar. Over the past five years, DJ Envy has promoted Caesar as a real estate expert and trustworthy source for learning the game. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. Flippin' NJ. DJ Envy and Caesar's partnership seemed innocent until Tony the Closer began receiving messages about investors giving the two money and not receiving any money back. Then, the investigation began. July 21, 2018. DJ Envy posts to his Instagram about a house he purchased in Detroit. A couple of weeks ago, at Knit the Grit introduced me to a guy named Caesar, aka Flipping NJ, that invests in New Jersey real estate. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, his name is Knit the Grit. He owns the label where uh, Fetty Wap is signed to, and he did the introduction between me and Envy. Caesar Pena's Instagram looked like this at the time. The message that Envy shared was he looks like us, listens to the same music, dresses like us, and is from the same place as us. He just had the vision of real estate before any one of us did. He owns over 500 units in New Jersey. <laughs> you have a criminal record, but your criminal record actually got you into this business. This seems to be a prerequisite for being a subject of my videos as of late. I'm more street educated than anything else. When all my friends went to college and stuff like that, chose the streets. Everybody's telling me, oh, you gotta change your life, can't do this, you're gonna end up in jail. So I ended up in jail. I'm starting to wonder if he... Hey, I I I'm gonna publish make this call out and I know these are my peers in media and this is not targeted at them but it's targeted at the platforms we know we have a lot of we do have a duty to the audience and to the culture with the breakfast club gotta stop letting scammers come up there I'm gonna be honest with you if niggas is coming up there that y'all letting um, promote fixing credit they're probably a scammer y'all 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 have to stand accountable for that shit. 
Y'all let niggas come up there talking all this bullshit real estate shit, but really they're trying to scam niggas money. Y'all got to stand accountable for this shit. I'm talking about not only the Breakfast Club, but all platforms. I don't want to be targeted, so I'm going to mention everybody. I don't know if No Jumper does it. I, shit, I know I don't do it, but shit, I've thrown myself in there. Uh, uh, um, Vlad, does he do it? He would be liable too if, if he does it. Gillian Wild, do they do it? Nori, do, does he do it? Y'all got to stop promoting these scammers. If y'all not getting no type of ad money or whatever the fuck, holla at Big Act. Big Act has figured this all out. I don't need the scammer money to, to, to have them get access to my audience. Because I would feel shitty if I allowed people to scam the people who have built my career. This is an epidemic where we have people with established platforms hand their platforms over to scammers. And then when the scammers get exposed, they act like they never did it. Oh, we didn't know there were scammers. Nigga, why the fuck did you co-sign them in the beginning? If you are in hip hop and you're promoting anybody who's saying they're fixing credit, they're going to get you rich. They're going to take your money and invest it in real estate. They're going to do anything where you got to make an investment. You need to have a reflection moment with yourself. You are not only a platform. You are now a conduit for somebody being scammed. This is a big deal. This is where we're going to get to the crux of this issue. Because I don't believe that DJ Envy, me personally, I don't think he meant to scam people. But he opened up the avenue that so many people could get scammed. So what should be the proper conversation? Because truth be told, and by the way, I know DJ Envy and, you know, I don't think he's a bad person. I, I, he can't really say shit right now. He can't say shit because there, there's a lot of lawsuits. But we're in a place there's we're getting zero answers. And I watched this shit before. I'm going to let y'all watch the majority of it. This shit was disgusting. This shit was disgusting. He and Jay Morrison were roommates in prison sharing their ideas on how to implement their street knowledge in the real estate game. I was never thinking about public speaking or anything like that. And I met Envy. He inspired me. And he said I had a great story and I can inspire other people. DJ Envy introduced Caesar to his millions of followers, which is why he's found himself in the middle of the controversy for what we're going to unveil shortly. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. Jay. We picked this up off of auction.com. We outbid somebody. Just a few months after this Instagram post that used the word we a lot, Caesar was introduced to Anthony Barone and Anthony Martini. Martini signed DJ Envy to his record label in 2016. A few years later, when DJ Envy began promoting Caesar, Martini became interested. He trusted Envy from their friendship and because Caesar sounded legit. Envy told Martini that he was a partner on many deals with Caesar that had gone well and mentioned that there was a new investment opportunity opening up to partner with them. 385-391 Totowa Avenue in Patterson, New Jersey is where an old school building rots away. Envy told Martini that this location would become a new apartment complex project spearheaded by Caesar and Jennifer Pina. Martini felt confident enough in his friend DJ Envy and this alleged real estate mogul that he invested one million dollars into their project. Wait, started what? with no money, and here I am, fifty million dollars later in real estate. How much? Fifty million. Investors felt confident giving him money because they believed he was a real estate mogul. Caesar and Jennifer Pena told Martini that they funded the project with two point five million dollars of their own money and a three point five million dollar construction loan. Martini's money would help with overruns and operating expenses until the liquidation date. Around the same time, Envy and Caesar met with a man named Anthony Barone, who brought his friends Eaton Sugarman. DJ Clue and Gary V as they all indicated interest in the prospective real estate investment opportunities. Over the next four hours, Caesar and Envy drove around Patterson, New Jersey, showing off the successful real estate investments they had. One of the properties shown to the group was 385-391 Totowa Avenue that was being pitched as a chance to turn this rundown school into a financially lucrative apartment complex called Taylor Court Apartments. Barone decided to invest $500,000 for a 12.5% interest stake after believing the apartment project would be a good investment. Caesar said construction would be completed a year later in early 2021. What helped Barone solidify his decision was seeing documents for the project also signed by his friend Anthony Martini to proceed with wiring his half a million dollars to Caesar. A little red flag is that it's now alleged that Caesar forged Martini's signature. We had the Jacob Javis Center setting everything up. Last time we had 4,000 in here. So if you want to learn about real estate. Federal canine officers are going to utilize scent when they go hunting for Caesar. The best way to upgrade your scent is with a subscription service like Scent. Right, my boy got to add in the middle of this. We got to skip past him, my man.
property at 91 Harding Avenue in Clifton, New Jersey, where he would contribute $100,000 and receive a 30% return within five months. So, I don't know if y'all are doing the math. So this thing is scammed $1.6 already. Look. $1,000 and receive a 30% return within five months. So what he's doing, he's telling people, yo, give me $100,000. you are going to be like a part owner in like this real estate venture and we're investing in these little quick flips. If you give me $100,000, I'm going to give you a profit of like 30%. So like in a year or two, I'm going to give you back $130,000. You get what I mean? That's how he was getting these guys. Once using my favorite software batch leads, we can see that 91 Harding Avenue in Clifton, New Jersey was never purchased by Caesar or an LLC he owns. A couple months later in January 2021, a company titled BTC Investments LLC entered into a joint venture agreement with Caesar Pena. The property address was 27 Boyden Parkway South in Maplewood, New Jersey, where BTC would provide $150,000 to Caesar to help facilitate the purchase and rehab of the property. Caesar would return 35% profit within three months. In February 2021, Caesar went into a joint venture agreement with Paul Peralta for the property located at 89 Franklin Ave in Hawthorne, New Jersey. Peralta would send Caesar $100,000 and receive 30% profit within five months. In March 2021, Mr. Roman contacted Caesar asking for an update because the five-month period had passed for the property to complete renovations and sell. Caesar said the property hadn't been sold and that Mr. Roman would be better rolling his money into another property investment. Caesar wired him $30,000 from his supposed profits and what? told him to roll over the initial $100,000 into a second property. This new investment property was 109 Lyon Street in Patterson, New Jersey. At least this property was purchased by Caesar through his LLC called From Start to Flipping LLC in November 2020 for $210,000. Caesar told Trevor Roman that all he needed was an additional $50,000 and he'd receive all of his money back within five months with a little premium added on top. That same month, Paul Peralta entered into a second joint venture agreement with Caesar for the property at 566-568 East 39th Street in Patterson, New Jersey. He would send $200,000 to Caesar and profit $70,000. What I found odd about this arrangement is that 566 East 39th Street in Patterson is for an auto body shop. The apartment next door is address 568-570 East 39th Street. The address listed in the lawsuit was different than what the actual address appears to be. This happened multiple times and I can't figure out why that happened. Caesar bought this property in November 2020 and sold it in February 2022 for a $226,000 difference. May 2021, BTC Investments has patiently waited for their property to sell and recoup their investment. Caesar says, not yet. Wait a little longer. June 2021, Caesar and Paul Peralta enter their third joint venture agreement for the property located at 267 6th Avenue in Patterson, New Jersey. Paul will provide $150,000 towards the purchase and rehab and receive $45,000 profit. Caesar bought this property four years prior in February 2017 for $245,000 and obtained a $385,000 commercial mortgage on the property in February 2018. If he had a loan that covered purchase and rehab, why was he taking $150,000 additional dollars from Paul Peralta. Around that same time, Mr. Peralta sent Caesar a final $150,000 as a private money loan for Caesar's real estate operations with the expectation that he'd receive a $45,000 profit. On August 30, 2021, Trevor Roman still had not received any updates on his property, but Caesar did send him $2,500. Caesar also told Mr. Roman that he had a new opportunity for him to roll his money into a third joint venture agreement due to the long sales process of 109 Lion Street. You know what this reminds me of? As I'm hearing this guy uh, um, describe it, you ever watch Wolf of Wall Street? It's the Matthew M McCogney um, scene. Here we go. Okay, if you're Warren Buffett or if you're Jimmy Buffett. Here we go. You know, think about Teresa. Name of the game. Now, I don't know if y'all following. This is how they, uh, you know, there's an actual guy for the Wolf of Wall Street. I forgot what his real name is, but... Um, it's actually based on a true story. Their whole thing was instead of just keep the customer, the client always in the market that they feel like they're getting money, but really you're getting money. So they think they're in an investment while you're taking home cash. It's the biggest finesse. I hope that DJ Envy and this, this Caesar nigga wasn't doing that. Basically they saying fuck like, this is how people get over on like the, the regular people. And, and and so to explain it with this DJ Envy and, and, and Caesar shit, apparently they would be like, yo, give me a hundred thousand, right? I'm gonna invest in this property or in this whatever project we have going on, and I'm gonna be able to give you, 
You gave me a hundred thousand. I'm gonna give you a hundred and thirty-five thousand in like six months, which is like a thirty-five percent return on your money. That's crazy, right? That's like like your bank wouldn't even give you like a hundred and ten thousand like in that time if you put a hundred thousand in the bank. So that's a crazy return. Now what what the Caesar nigga kept doing is that instead of paying you out that one thirty that he promised you, he would say, hey. You know you about to get that 130, but don't just take it out in liquid cash. I got another house that I want you to invest in. How about you take your profits from that and then the, the original down, down payment and we'll throw it into that shit. Except he's lying. Here we go. The third joint venture agreement credited Mr. Roman with $200,000 towards the next property, which would yield a profit of $70,000 within five months when sold. 109 Lion Street, the second property investment offered to Mr. Roman, eventually sold four months later in December 2021 for $400,000. But in January 2022, Mr. Roman had still not received any money, so Caesar offered a fourth joint venture rollover agreement for the property located at 126 Jasper Street in Patterson, New Jersey. Mr. Roman was credited with $270,000 towards the fourth property property with a profit of $94,500. That meant Caesar would be sending Mr. Roman $364,500 when the Jasper Street property finished construction and sold. The only problem is that Caesar's LLC sold this property in December 2020 for $390,000, which means he didn't own the property when he offered the opportunity to Mr. Roman to partner on the deal. So the first thing I, I realized and what I used to do was I used to use my own money. When I met Caesar, I realized Caesar will not use his own money. He's probably one of the cheapest people <laughs> I know. I think what Envy actually means is Caesar uses other people's money for purchases outside of real estate. November 2021, Caesar notifies Barone and Martini that construction is underway for their apartment building project, even notifying them that workers are there. Every Somebody says, yo, you gotta call Nick the Gritty, give them 1.6 million. Did he get his money? back the nick I, I fuck with nick the grid did he get his money back every day and that the plumbing and foundation are done december 2021 stanley acosta attended one of dj envy and caesar's real estate seminars at the javits center in new york city a few days later he was in pina's office discussing a p chat you know how i got this face on because this whole time i'm thinking i have to work hard to get my money I didn't know niggas was scamming like this to get the bread. Like, this is crazy. Potential partnership deal for the property at 145 Union Avenue in Patterson, New Jersey. The only data I see is on Redfin, indicating this property hasn't been sold since 2015. In March 2022, Acosta gave Caesar $150,000 in cash with the promise of $45,000 profit within five months. Around this time, Caesar reached out to Barone and Martini to notify them that the Taylor Court apartment project was underway for the second time, but completion would now be around November 2022. May 17, 2022, 2022, Alexis Hernandez gives Caesar $250,000 for the purchase of 27 South Boyden. Yo, where is he finding these people to just keep giving him quarter million of dollars? Oh, it gotta be the fucking little seminars. Oh, nah, nah, this is a finesse. Nah, this is a robbery. I can't even lie to you. Like, low key, this Caesar nigga might, like, he needs a movie. Every great scammer needs a movie. Let's be honest. Jordan Belford had one with, with, with Wolf of Wall Street. We need the Wolf of Patterson. This nigga, this nigga Caesar Pena gonna be in the Wolf of Patterson. In Parkway in Maplewood, New Jersey. Alexis was promised a profit of $45,000 when the project completed five months later. Caesar bought this property for $409,500 17 months earlier in December 2020 with a $385,000 construction crazy. loan. Once again, why did Caesar need to raise $250,000 for a project that he already had a construction loan on two years prior? June 2022, Trevor Roman was ready to get paid out after waiting around 18 months for his projects to sell. He went to Caesar's office and demanded money. Caesar obliged by giving him two checks totaling $163,000. But Caesar said not to cash them because those accounts didn't have the money just yet. Caesar then offered him a fifth joint venture agreement for the property at 16 Gunther Place in Passaic, New Jersey. Caesar purchased this Perfect. property through his warehouse LLC in August 2014 for $97,000. Mr. Roman probably didn't know that Caesar was having serious money problems around this time. On June 30, 2022, Alexis Investment and Funding 2 LLC filed a foreclosure complaint against Caesar and Jennifer Pena. 
The Pinas took out a commercial loan secured by a second mortgage for their property in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, in the amount of $594,633. That's on top of the $2.5 million mortgage when they purchased the property. In 2013, the property looked like this. A decade later, and they've built a beautiful mansion. The loan foreclosing on them only cost $5,000 a month. You would think it wasn't that much for a real That's a firehouse. real estate mogul. August 2022, Anthony Martini is tired of Caesar not responding to his call, so he decides to drive by the job site for his massive Taylor Court apartments deal. He finds that no construction has been done despite Caesar saying it began months ago. He demands Caesar to return his money. According to Batch Leads, this property doesn't have a mortgage. But Caesar told Martini that he would have his money back once he could refinance the debt on the property. This same month, August 2022, Caesar met the next victim we'll label EB, who had just received a settlement agreement for being abused in S aid. Wanting to solidify a secure financial future for her and the kid on the way, she decided to meet with Caesar, who promoted himself as being a real estate mogul with significant experience and success. Property number one for their- Yo, Chad, how crazy it is that you gave somebody like half a million dollars for a property that they said is finna start, like, building, and you don't even drive by there to be like, oh, okay, I've, I'm putting half a million dollars into this property here. They waited till afterwards- partnership would be 470 River Street in Patterson, New Jersey, where she'd provide $250,000 and receive 30% profit within five months. Caesar bought this property in March 2014 for only $90,000. Property number two would be 523 Park Ave in Patterson, New Jersey, where she'd provide another $250,000. Give that nigga another quarter thousand dollars. Caesar bought this property September 2018 for only $225,000. Property number three would be 149-151 Manchester Ave in Patterson, New Jersey, where she'd provide $100,000. Caesar bought this property in April 2019 for $140,000 using a construction loan of $256,000. A month later, Caesar notified EB that he had another investment opportunity for her where she'd contribute an additional $150,000. Despite taking money from these investors, Caesar couldn't- That's if you're not keeping up with the math, this one woman who supposedly got a settlement because she was sexually assaulted literally gave him $750,000 is three quarters of a million dollars. And pay his credit card bill. On September 9, 2022, Amex filed a complaint against Caesar Pena and Pena Management LLC for defaulting on their credit card bill. Amex alleges that the Pena's didn't even pay the minimum amount due and their account balance was $94,800.99. On that same day, Caesar signed an agreement with Amy Flips LLC for two joint venture agreements and a personal guarantee on both. Caesar allegedly couldn't pay his credit card bill, but he was accepting money from another investor. I'll let you determine why. Property number one with Amy Flips was a $250,000 investment for 27 South Boyden Parkway in Maplewood, New Jersey. If that property sounds familiar, that's because it is. Just three months earlier, Caesar signed a joint venture agreement for that same property with Alexis Hernandez. Property number two was another $250,000 investment for 89 Franklin Avenue in Hawthorne, New Jersey. Caesar bought this property for $260,000 five and a half years earlier in March 2017. October 2022, Trevor Roman wanted his money, so he stormed into Caesar's office again. Caesar gave him two checks for $80,000 that did clear. I'm like, I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> October is when Alexis Hernandez's loans are coming due. Caesar sends two checks to Alexis. Check number one for $100,000 and check number two for $250,000. Both bounce due to insufficient funds. Despite the heat turning up, Caesar still found a way to introduce four more victims into the scheme. October 7, 2022, Jenna Mar Investments LLC and Caesar entered a joint venture agreement for $100,000 for the property located at 149-151 Manchester Ave with the promise of 20% returns in five months. This is the same property as EB's third joint venture agreement just a couple months prior and already had a construction loan covering the purchase and rehab. The following week on October 12, 2022, Derek Eric D'Angelo signed a joint venture agreement with Caesar for the property at 523 Park Avenue in Patterson, New Jersey for $100,000. Now, Chad, at a certain point, you got to start learning from the scammers. At this point, I'm not even mad at DJ Envy and Caesar. I'm trying to learn how they did it. Like, how the, how the fuck did y'all get niggas to... <laughs> Yo, Chad, after a while, you got to stop being mad at the scammers. You got to just try to learn from them. Like, damn, if they, if they finessing like this, why ain't you? 
$1,000. Unbeknownst to Derek, Caesar had just signed an agreement with victim EB for that same property. Caesar promised Derek 30% returns within five months. Two weeks later, on October 25, 2022, Caesar met with Onsite Properties LLC to give him access to a partnership for properties 149-151 Manchester Ave in Patterson, New Jersey, and 523 Park Avenue in Patterson, New Jersey. If the addresses are starting to sound the same, that's because they are. Caesar was signing multiple agreements with investors and accepting significantly more capital than necessary to complete the projects. On-site Properties LLC handed over $300,000 to partner on those two properties. Hector Santana met with Caesar during this same week and signed joint venture agreements with Caesar for the Manchester Ave property and 462-464 East 24th Street in Patterson, New Jersey. Caesar purchased the 24th Street property three and a half years before in April 2019 for $202,000 and sold the property in October 2022 for $545,000. While it may seem like a sizable profit, we don't know all the costs associated with completion. But the key here is that Caesar was signing joint venture agreements with investors for a property he just sold and didn't even own. Hector Santana was promised 30% returns on $400,000 within five months, where that- 400,000? money was being used, I don't know. For Hector's two deals, Caesar was already overcapitalized on the Manchester Ave property from other investors, and the East 24th Street property had already sold. Where was the money going, Caesar? November 2022, Caesar signs an agreement with a third investor for a million dollars in order to fund a construction cost at the Taylor Court Apartments. Caesar never told Barone and Martini, the two investors who contributed $1.5 million combined already. November 9, 2022, Ransom Endeavors Inc. meets with Caesar, notifying him of $200,000 in liquid funds ready to invest. Caesar presented 89 Franklin Ave in Hawthorne, New Jersey as the investment property and that he would need the $200,000 to complete the project. Caesar promised a 30% return within five months, despite already owning the property for five years and having agreements with other investors for the same pro- Man, fuck that nigga TJ Exis, man. Caesar Pena is, is a real, he's a real finesse. Ain't they said there's another nigga that who say he's he, he got the methods? Fuck them methods, nigga. This the method. <laughs> Y'all gotta holler at Caesar for the method. That TJ X6 nigga ain't had nothing on this nigga, Caesar. This the methods property december 2022 btc investments have been trying to reach caesar for the prior 16 what's that other dude who supposedly say you know like he be hitting shit what's that dude name punch <laughs> punch made punch made what <laughs> yeah what's his name punch made dev or some shit i ain't gonna lie this some shit that's this like bandman kevo-esque matter of fact we might have to call bandman kevo on this one should i get bandman kevo on the line I might have to get Bandman Kev on the line months to no avail, he had not received a dollar in return in nearly two years. Caesar wouldn't respond to BTC investments, but he would respond to the next victim, Christian Vasquez. Caesar promoted the Manchester so at this point, this nigga could flip Narnia. <laughs> Chester Avenue property in Patterson once again. Christian provided $150,000 with a promise of 30% returns within five months. January 2023, EB was getting tired of hearing false promises and excuses for why the projects weren't completed. Caesar sent her a check for $80,000. The funds may have come from the next victim. Derek Maldonado gave Caesar $200,000 a few days prior to Caesar what? sending the $80,000 check to EB. If you guessed their agreement would be for the property on Manchester Ave in Patterson, New Jersey, then you are correct. 30% profits within five months were promised to Derek, despite that property already being overcapitalized from other investors. February 2023, Caesar is likely keeping himself afloat at this point by continually raising money from more victims. This month, he adds another three that we know of. These three separate investors hand over a combined $900,000. All three signed joint venture agreements for the Manchester wait, Ave whoa, property whoa, whoa. and requests Mark Avenue and Franklin Ave property, likely keeping himself afloat at this point by continually raising money from more victims. This month, he adds another. You know what's so sad about this? This old guy probably gave up, like, I don't know, his retirement fund. This young woman right here probably, you know, like, is probably impressionable, don't know too much, but probably listens to the Breakfast Club or some shit like that and believes that these guys are going to do her right. And this nigga right here is probably just like her, just believes in this shit. This is crazy. Another three that we know of, these three separate investors hand over a combined $900,000.
All three signed joint venture agreements for the Manchester Ave property, while the largest investor of the three signed two other JVs for the Park Avenue and Franklin Avenue properties. March 2023, Caesar had been dodging Trevor Roman's calls and requests for updates, so he decided to show up to Caesar's office again. Caesar promised that the property was nearly done and just needed another month to close, and Trevor could expect the $280,000 that was owed on that date. Amy Flips also decided to show up to Caesar's office demanding an update and threatening legal action after Caesar had cut communication. Caesar lied again, saying that the construction at the properties was nearly complete and her money would be on the way next month. Caesar also met with Onsite Properties LLC after six months of refusing communication. Caesar advised this victim that he should roll his investment into another property, which he did not take kindly. Also in March, Caesar met up with Hector Santana to advise him on rolling his $350,000 initial investment into the Park Avenue property other investors had already invested in. Caesar gives Hector two post-dated checks, one for $70,000 and another for $100,000. The first one cleared, but the second check bounced. April 2023, Caesar sends Ransom Endeavors, Inc. a check for $30,000 representing 50% of the interest owed from the projects. After six months of avoiding contact, Caesar reaches out to Stanley Acosta asking for bank account information so he could send the proceeds of a property sale. The money never arrived. Caesar finally answers Derek D'Angelo's communication and asks him to drive multiple hours to his office. Derek picked up checks totaling $130,000. They both bounced. Derek threatened to report Pino, which influenced Caesar to send a wire of $30,000, leaving the initial $100,000 still missing. If you're wondering where the money came from, the final victim, Chamberlain Group Real Estate Ventures LLC, invested $835,000 with Caesar for the Manchester Ave and Boyden Parkway properties. They were promised a significant return within six months. May 2023, Caesar sends two checks to on-site properties LLC, one for $100,000 and another for $37,000 and he was told not to deposit them just yet. Those checks have still not cleared to this day. June 2023, Barone and Martini are getting anxious that their property doesn't seem to be close to being ready to rent or sell. Martini decided to drive by the property and this is what he found. All lawsuits point to Caesar cutting off communication with all investors. My guess is his phone is in his back pocket and he can't reach it. What's not a joke is the amount of victims in this investment scheme I only know of about 20, which brings us to DJ Envy. And we only expected like 50 people at the seminar that we did. The first one we did, it was like 1,500 people. The second Ooh. one was like 2,000. From what I hear, Envy said he got scammed too. Then 5,000, then 10,000. Because of DJ Envy's influence, he was able to sell out large rooms for his real estate seminars with Caesar Pena. Many of the complaints explain how they met with Caesar because of watching him on stage at the seminars. We currently own and manage and also have projects that we're building now from the ground up of 3,000 units. This video was filmed in June 2022, the same month a mortgage company was foreclosing on them on their primary residence. They've been paying like two, three thousand for seminars, five thousand seminars. And then when Sheesh. they get to the seminar, they don't learn payment. anything. Then to talk to people, they got to pay more money. And we tried to stop that. It's alleged in the complaints that they did the opposite. Following the speaker presentations, members of the Pena Network, including DJ Envy, set up booths at which they offered private consultations with seminar attendees. They obtained all of their contact info. And then they sized up the financial resources in order to solicit attendees with high net worths for their joint ventures. And then offering consulting services with Caesar for 50 Fifteen hundred dollars to twenty five hundred dollars per meeting at. Hey, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I know this is fucked up. By the way, I never do some shit like this, but I'm like, damn, these things, they got away with it, right? His office. It seems that every meeting in his office turned into a pitch for his joint ventures. <laughs> and you know, there's also a lot of seminars out there that are trash and that people are, are playing <laughs> off your hope. So these events, which start starts becoming a marketing funnel, right? People start now coming into mentorships. They come to these events to be able to get game. But then most of these events, there's that same thing that you talked about that you don't like, the upsell. See, because I pay attention, right? You, you had a major problem with people who had live events, and then they didn't teach much information. Apparently, this dude right here, Tony the Closer, he's the one who, like, I guess it was like niggas was getting finesse. Apparently, like, $20 million got finesse, and he's the one who, like, exposed it. Information that they like, they probably think he a snitch, right? Niggas was getting money, and he over here fucking, fucking up the money train. And they do these upsells for higher mentorships, et cetera, et cetera, investment opportunities. Well, it seems as if that's what's now happened with you and Caesar. Now let's analyze Envy's potential liability. Has anybody ever gave me a dollar, a dime, a nickel, a quarter, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, a five hundred thousand, a million? Not one person. Because I'm making my business not to take money from nobody. And there's nobody on this live 
And there's nobody <clears throat> in here that could ever say Envy, they gave Envy a dollar. Envy used the word we a lot when posting videos at Properties with Caesar. In the description of this Instagram post, Caesar writes, we can fix it and make a profit. What up y'all, it's DJ Envy. Slipping at Jay. Join us July 31st right here at the Jacob Javits Center. We're doing a real estate seminar talking everything real estate from Airbnb to wholesaling to flipping. Not only that, you can partner with us on some deals. Make some money with us, your partner. DJ Envy is not being honest about his relationship with Caesar. He may not have directly accepted money, but he promoted financial partnerships as Damn. a reason to go to the seminars so many people were like you don't mess with him he's a he's a con but he's a he felon he, he's a criminal he's a this he's a that you know don't mess with him his behavior alleged in the complaints is indicative of someone who is still a con man started with no money and here i am 50 million dollars later in real estate how much 50 million how is this dude claiming uh sarah says you'd have to really not understand what an investment is if you think anyone could promise a 30 percent profit in five months nigga you are a lender not a investor Ah, that's a good point. And to own $50 million in real estate, yet not have the ability to pay anyone back in the past three to five years. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. I know it's late at night. We're still in the office. It's going to be hard for Envy to prove that he was a non-party to Caesar's business operations when his office was literally right next door, and he mentions we no did deals in the majority of their posts. But now it seems like, seems like you're fishing for things to put me involved. Just because I'm in the office office with somebody else doesn't mean that me and that person is doing anything with each other. Caesar's last post on his personal Instagram page is February 20th of this year. The last post of Caesar on DJ Envy's account is on July 26, 2022. I didn't hit with, with Caesar a couple of times and flip money in less than 30 days. Some of my builders like the school we still got and I haven't got my money back yet. But I know that's part of the game. Since Envy platformed Caesar and promoted him for four years, I think it's his responsibility to be completely transparent with everything that happened. Credit yeah. card scams, right? Credit card yeah. scams. Yeah, so before that, I, from the age of 16 on, I was selling drugs. Even better, Caesar found his mentor in prison. The funny thing is that when I was in jail, I actually met a guy who was a, a real estate developer already, and he actually kind of became my mentor. He inspired me to get into real estate once I came home. He didn't say the mentor's name, but how funny would it be if the guy was Mr. Three-Time Felon real estate mogul Jay Morrison? And I even told you, because when we had that conversation, I called him last night. I'm like, oh, boy. Envy my mans. I'm going to keep it 100. I, I like DJ Envy. On, uh, I mean, I don't know him like that. <clears throat> you know, obviously, we did an interview on The Breakfast Club. But but I, I've always kind of admired him in terms of work ethic. And, and I don't, I've don't. i never seen some, like, scamming or dishonest stuff about his business dealing. But I ain't going to lie. This is very nasty. And I'm wondering what the ramifications of this is, right? Apparently, there's, like, a lot of lawsuits kind of flying around. By the way, thank you, Mob. Uh, 1914, it says, if Envy gets jail time, I wonder if God will tell Tyrese too. <laughs> what? Um, I, I don't, is this something that's being investigated by the, the federal government or even the government at all? This seems like a huge scam. Now, I think Envy's going to have a uh, disposition that even though he allowed a platform for this Caesar nigga to scam people, and even though he may have purported that they were partners or he was like maybe a vigilant eye with the business, the honest truth is that he wasn't. And if anything, he was taken advantage of too. So he's not complicit in any of this. But I'm wondering if there's if, if there's any like legal charges that might come across with, with all this. Here's the, I'm glad you said that, um, that kid, uh, that kid Omar. I'm not too sure where DJ Envy was in his career, but bro, you've been the anchor of the Breakfast Club for so long, bro. This situation has fucked up your credibility forever. I'm telling you, DJ Envy can't promote y'all buying a stock, y'all buying a fucking, uh, um, any investment, he can uh, um, um, tell you how to buy a bottle of water. This nigga, I ain't gonna lie, with all due respect to DJ Envy, your credibility is shot from niggas even buying a party ticket, nigga, for something you're you gonna be DJing at. You can't promote shit no more. I'm sorry to say. Because you have risked your integrity, and this is really big. This is why I don't really get into some of these things. 
when you put your anytime y'all platform these scammers, you put your integrity on the line. You are Im implicitly and on a subtle level co-signing these guys to say, hey, if you watch me and believe me and think that I'm a good guy, this person who I'm platforming is a good guy too. So, you know, uh, I don't think, you know, uh, my personal belief, I don't think Envy was in on anything. I don't think even Envy even benefited from anything. But I do think he shot himself in the foot. If you ask me what I really believe, I think Envy, who's a hustler, the ultimate hustler. I, I love his hustler when it comes to DJing. Bro, the dude does like three, four parties a night. He does a car show. He got he got the breakfast club. He really works all the angles to make sure he's getting all the money. By the way, he got like seven or eight kids. You know what I mean? He got a wife, and his wife got an expensive taste. So I like the fact that he hustles. I think what happened is that this dude came to him and probably told him margins, just like how he probably told investors, that somehow he believed that maybe it was like one of these real sales going through or something of the sort. And he says, oh, maybe this is true. And DJ Envy bought, bought into it. And he then promoted to his audience. And those people then went into business with Caesar. And then they got scammed. Should Envy be charged? I don't know. I'm going to be honest. I don't know. Does Envy owe people transparency? And should he be held accountable? Or should he hold himself accountable? Yes. If he's saying that he has zero um, accountability of all this, we don't know this dude Caesar without you. And that's a huge deal. Now, I don't know legally what, what, could, what could happen of this. What we hear is that there is a civil suit happening. I can't imagine that whatever authorities wouldn't be thinking that millions of dollars, maybe this could be um legal but he here's the thing and, and this is my last thought on it is what caesar did illegal technically no, no, it's coming obviously but is it illegal in the eyes of the law if Yes, he was overfunding some of the properties he owned. Well, actually, he's going to be... Yeah, my, I can't even defend him. My bad. I think yeah, I think he's going to jail, bro. I ain't going to hold you. Because <laughs> this nigga was taking investments on properties he didn't own. Like, he was clearly lying to investors and taking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, he's going to jail. Yeah, it's over. Like, it, it, it's one thing I was thinking. I'm like, well, maybe, you know, with, with investments, <clears throat> shit could happen. Maybe you just need to wait. Maybe it's not six months you're going to get this return. Maybe you got to wait for three years or four years. And such is the case with business at times. But apparently he was taking people's money for an alleged investment in, in houses he didn't own. So somebody said he sold the same house five times. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I do believe that something's coming down the line. The Caesar dude has pretty much disappeared from the internet. And DJ Envy is not talking about this. I can imagine DJ Envy has a lawyer, and I'm hoping um, for his sake that he has nothing to do with this. You know what I mean? If they show that he was somewhat cognizant or somewhat aware of this plot to defraud people of their hard-earned money, it's going to get really sticky for him. I want to believe that he was not, and um, he was also just misled by this one guy who just took advantage of everything, all right? By the way, uh, Mood Music, thank you for the uh, five dollars, uh, five pounds, actually. She, uh, he said, Star and Tony the Closer are sticking their knives on DJ Envy. I wouldn't be surprised if um, if iHeart cuts their losses. Um, no. I, okay, okay. Let, let, me, let me backtrack a little bit to this DJ Envy and um, DJ Envy and Caesar thing. I do not see, truthfully and honestly, I do not see I heart firing or having any punitive actions towards DJ Envy. I think they're going to be involved in a lawsuit, which what's going to happen is that corporate is going to take that serious. So what I think is going to happen, let's be very clear. And I'm not accusing anyone of this, but I do know how people jug and finesse. Trust me. I get opportunities to jug and finesse my audience too. Okay. 
I think iHeart's going to put their foot down and said, all them scammers that y'all bring on here, is it's a wrap with that. All them little ear hustlers, it's a wrap. You get niggas to come on here to promote shit, it's over. And I'm pretty sure what's only needed for them to back up or for them to kind of cut that shit out is them be named in the lawsuit. I don't think they're going to fire Envy, right? Because I'm pretty sure Envy's going to play ignorant. But I think they're going to make sure, like, you won't you won't see the Breakfast Club promote another scammer in a while. And if they do, I don't know. At that point, I don't know. But but I don't. you won't see another financial advisor, stock broker, day trader, real estate, get rich. You won't see none of that on the Breakfast Club for, for the foreseeable future. And that's how it should be, though. I don't see them getting rid of these MV. These MV is like... I mean, not saying that there's tenured um, status when it comes to, like, entertainment and shit, but, like, Envy's been there before pretty much the whole fucking, the whole station, to keep it real. Uh, I am the prodigal son. They said, uh, Tasha K has put out some, oh, oh no, wait, before we get to that, uh, A.B. Kirk says, Ack, Envy is legally culpable. This is why you have to disclaim that you're not giving financial advice. By co-signing this, you're culpable. He going to have to take the stand and help pay restitution. I'm going to be honest with you. <clears throat> I think before Envy does that, Envy stitches on that nigga. Like, with all due respect. Like, Envy's not straight, dude. Like, there was a... I seen Tony the Closer played, like, a private message with, with, with DJ Envy. Tony the Closer, DJ Envy. And the um, private message that he posted. Let me see. The private I message see. The private message he posted. Let me see if I can find it. The, yeah, right here. The private message he posted. You're going to basically hear Envy saying, this nigga better get it together because I'm finna send everything to my lawyer. Yeah, that's shit. Envy ain't no street nigga. Snitch, Envy. What the fuck? Tell on that nigga. People know that you distance yourself, though. This is a private conversation. I think he recorded. Um. If it, so this is this is what I just did. When I seen that message, when I seen the the, the you know somebody tagged me on it, right? Yeah. This is exact. This is exactly what the message I sent to Caesar. I said, "You need to fix this ASAP." I said, I gave you a platform to talk real estate and to help people. I said, the amount of calls, and I said this to him and his wife, I said, the amount of calls I received that you owe people money is crazy. I said, to the fact that lawyers reached out to me and are going to the authorities. People are telling me checks are bouncing. They're saying you're not calling people back. I said, authorities called me, asked if I want to be involved with a lawsuit. And I said, there's nothing I can do because you still owe me money. I said, love y'all to death, but I'm not looking crazy. I didn't take not a person's money, nor have I been involved with y'all taking people's money. And I beg you, when we first started the seminar, not to take anybody's money, a celebrity, or nothing. I'm just telling you, if this is not fixed, this is going to be a huge problem, and I'm not being silent anymore. And I just said it like maybe 10 minutes ago. Mm. And like I said, I'm going to give them till I get back on Monday. After the break, if, if all the niggas that say he owe money, he don't get that money back. Because even if he, if he owes people money, nigga, sell your pill. You got properties. I can't even sit here and lie. You got properties. You got, like, it's not like he's staying old. It's not like no Jay Mars and shit where he ain't got no properties or whatever. He got land. Yeah. Sell that land. Even if you got to sell it for the low, get them niggas their money back. Yeah. That, every that, last that. I'm not doing it. But All right, shout out to Envy, man. He's definitely going to tell on that nigga, and he should. <laughs> Fuck out of here. I mean, like, the hell? Tell on that nigga, man. The hell? Come on. Tell on that nigga, bro. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Somebody say, yo, Ak, we're going to get a little pump on, on, on off the records. Oh, we're going to get him on there. We're going to get him on there. If, if not, this year is going to be top of next year. Um, What else? Uh, somebody says, yo, uh, uh, I guess in relation to the uh, Tasha, uh, no, no, the Easy E, not what, Easy the Block, whatever his name is. And um, Papoose, somebody says, Tasha K put some story out saying, Easy and his team backdoor Remy. Selling the story of the alleged affair. Okay, I, well that's interesting. Who the fuck gives a like? Who, 
like realistically about selling stories, like who would pay more than like even ten thousand dollars for that? Like, let's be very clear. And, and and if you were supposedly with Remy, why would you fuck up your relationship with her to sell the story of like however Remy wants to handle it, if you're the side nigga, now turn possibly main, you gotta let Remy does do it because Remy's the star. Like, who the fuck is buying that story for anything? I don't know. Anyway. M Mob uh, 1914 says both them niggas look like the O3 cafeteria cool cool table. Okay. All right. By the way, uh, okay. A anything more on this DJ Envy and, and, and Caesar thing? I'm giving the DJ Envy the benefit of the doubt right now. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. I will, by the way, I I'm a little disheartened that he hasn't really spoken on it more at length. But I guess it's a legal matter at this point, and he can't say shit. Like, so, like, what, what were we expect him to say? He's not gonna say shit. So we'll see what's what's gonna end up out of here. But uh, I saw some legal document where it basically said that Envy himself got scammed as well. You get what I mean? I think I posted that on my, on my Instagram where Envy, at least in the lawsuit, Envy has said that he's also a victim. Which I guess people would have been like, "Nigga, how the fuck you a victim?" When you the one who aided in us getting robbed. Like, you know what I mean? But, yo, know, such is such is the case, right? Let me see if I could find it really quickly. Let's go down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Is this right here? Pasta thought it was his chance filed by people who say they invested with Pena and never got the money they were promised. I was texting him like almost every other day, like, hey, what's up with the money? So he's like, I need that money, bro. Like, constantly texting him, texting him, texting him. He keeps delaying, delaying. Our investigation finds in some cases, Pena sold investments in properties real estate records show he never owned or sold years earlier. The lawsuits already total close to $10 million, with more being filed every week. For the last year and a half or more, it's just been taking money in from people and, and there's been no, no likelihood of people getting their money back. Some of the lawsuits also mention Rashawn Casey. He's a radio personality who goes by the name DJ Envy. Oh, no. Casey often appeared with Pena at real estate seminars, but his attorney insists he's a victim too. And DJ Envy also um, gave $500,000 as an investment, uh, which he has not uh, received back yet. Pena's attorney declined to be interviewed, but in a letter to the court, he complains about the filed by people. So DJ Envy is a, a victim too. <laughs> oh man, this is, ain't this a bitch. Ain't this a goddamn bitch? All right, okay, okay, okay. Hey, chat, real quick. 